When are people finally going to wake up and state that the emperor has no clothes? We all will be sick. We all will need medical attention. Until people make a stand, nothing's going to change. What's funny is after being out of the business for so long, I now realize that the docs that were rep friendly and love the reps coming in, I don't know if I'd go see them. I have a new respect for those doctors that didn't want drug reps in their office. You gotta think, these guys have four-year degrees and it could be in public relations or in media, or whatever, but they're not scientists. And they're going out there and they're, they're given these three-week crash courses in these drugs and they're told exactly verbatim what to say. And you're persuading doctors to make decisions about patient care that drug reps do not educate physicians. They do nothing but muck up the works because that drug company is not satisfied with a drug that sells 900 million. They want it over a billion. And it's always about more money. What was it that first alerted you that there was an issue going on? The company was selling drugs off-label uh, to children and the drug was indicated for 18 and above. And so I became a whistleblower before I even knew what a whistleblower was. And that was by asking the wrong question. And the question was, hey, is this legal? Typically, whistleblowers are thought of as snitches or rats. So there's this mentality that whistleblowers are bad people. Mm -hmm. But from what we're finding is it's quite the opposite. These are people that are very concerned about a problem or an injustice that they're seeing. They are putting themselves at tremendous risk to try to solve it. They say, hey, am I really hearing what you're asking me to do? Are you really expecting me to do this? That was the beginning of the end for me. That's where all of a sudden I get demoted. You get labeled a troublemaker and they want to show you the door. I was finally terminated. I had to move back into my parents' house at 42 years old uh, with my son. I couldn't get a job. I couldn't even get an interview. I was being shunned by everyone I grew up with, even by my own family. It was pretty tough, and for several years. Um, and then we started to see some light. There was an announcement of a pending settlement. Then it took about another year. Uh, then the case finally settled. The Justice Department and our law enforcement partners have reached an historic $3 billion resolution with the pharmaceutical manufacturer GlaxoSmithKline. GSK Salesforce bribed physicians to prescribe GSK products using every imaginable form of high-priced entertainment. It was an 11-year ordeal. 11 years. 11 years. Do you think there were unnecessary deaths because these drugs were being prescribed off-label? Off-label. Absolutely. No question in my mind at all. Study 329 was created by a pharmaceutical company that made the drug Paxil. And the purpose of this study was to show that this drug was an effective and safe drug to treat children and adolescents with depression. The problem is that they found that that was not the case. The study revealed that their emotional stability deteriorated and their suicide ideation and risk tripled. They said, well, these findings are really inconsistent with what we want the study to say. So we're going to omit the parts that are not in favor of this drug being used to treat children. And only the good parts that supported the purpose of this study were chosen to be published. Some of the children that were dropping out because of ideation of suicide, they were labeled as non-compliant rather than being truly reported as a side effect that would eventually have proven this drug to be a bad choice. These facts that were not accurate and cherry-picked were published in the most respected journal of medicine. 